So, I'm nervous <laughs> for what's about to happen because I'm not enjoying this experiment. <laughs> I'm really, I'm just not enjoying it. I'm really not enjoying it. <laughs> Girl, there's been a death already. I love it. I, whoo, it's something I enjoy and not everyone else has to enjoy. <laughs> Hello friends! Today I'm going to do a vlog that I've seen a few other people do and it is reading for 24 hours but stopping the timer whenever I'm not reading. So it's not going to be a 24 hour readathon like you typically see. I did one of those recently. It's going to be me reading for 24 hours, probably over quite a long amount of time. I was thinking about it and in a 24 hour readathon between like, I always tend to sleep in them still, eating, doing other stuff, you probably only read for like 8 to 10 hours max I would say. So I'm super intrigued to see how much I read in this vlog and how I find the experiment. So let's go. So it's time to start figuring out what I'm gonna read in this video. And if you haven't seen, the last video I just posted was reading seven horror books in seven days. I literally just finished that yesterday. And so I'm a bit horrid out. I'm a bit like dark books out. Like I don't really wanna read like a dark murderous book yet <laughs> right now. I'm absorbing so much. I'm an empath. I absorb it all. But the problem is that's all I own pretty much. <laughs> so for example, I know in this video I would like to read True Crime Story by Joseph Knox and Sleep by C.L. Taylor, but both of these are like murder mysteries. So I was talking to my patrons last night, I was like, I know I don't want to read something dark, like, but I feel like I have no contemporaries or romances I want to read. Like I have nothing. I was like going through my list. And then one of my patrons, Hannah, was like, bitch, read Love on the Brain. <laughs> so I think I'm going to start with Love on the Brain by Ellie Hazelwood. I really wasn't planning on reading this anytime soon not because I didn't want to but like I just didn't have plans to but it's kind of just so happened that I need something light and fun to act as a bit of a you know breaking point between the horror video and this one so we're gonna start with this I actually don't think I'm gonna read any of this today though because I'm about to go out to a concert with my brother to go see AJR which is one of our favorite bands we're both really excited so I'm not bringing a bag with me because there's nowhere to put your bag so I can't bring this with me and I was thinking getting the audiobook but I'll probably just chat with my brother or listen to music on the train there or back. So I just wanted to tell you, we're gonna start with Love on the Brain probably tomorrow. And that way, True Crime Story, we can read after, and this will be my 100th book of the year. And this feels like a very deserving book to be my 100th book of the year. So yes, we shall start with Love on the Brain. Okay, first check-in. It's getting a bit cold, you guys. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so time check. I have read for two hours and 52 minutes. Well, <laughs> was all of that time 100% reading? Perhaps not. <laughs> You know, sometimes I get distracted and might go on Twitter for a bit. So it could be like up to half an hour of that, maybe not reading, but like I was still in the spirit of reading. So. <laughs> and I am halfway through Love on Zibrain and I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> I know this hasn't had the best reviews. I know not everyone's been loving it, but there's just something about Ali Hazelwood I do enjoy. Nothing that you say with the details is gonna change my mind. So the synopsis of this is basically that, again, it's two scientists <laughs> in a romance. These two knew each other from like, is it grad school? I don't know, like early, early school. They knew each other a couple years ago. She's always thought that he 
really hates her <laughs> and you can tell no it's just him trying to control his undying uncontrollable love for her but then they have to um work together on this project at nasa their co-leads on this project and another element of it is that she runs this viral twitter page called what would marie curie do and she's for years has been messaging this guy who's another famous like anonymous twitter a science academic and they've been messaging each other and it's like it's obvious from the get-go oh guess who that is <laughs> i wonder i'm shocked this is shocking news so they're like very close tell each other everything he keeps telling her i'm in love with this girl who i have to work with now but she's married because he thinks she's married because she was engaged when they knew each other and she now wears like her grandmother's wedding ring so miscommunication there <laughs> And I'm just like waiting for the moment. That is one of my favorite moments when he's like describing to her all the things that he loves about her. But like, she thinks she's, he's talking about someone else. She doesn't know that that's him. And you're just like, ah. I will say the one drawback for me so far has been that we had like a Harry Potter reference within maybe two, how many pages? Okay, on page 15, page 15. And I feel like we're past the point now of like when authors had books coming out that had Harry Potter references. They were obviously written a long time ago um, and thus couldn't have them removed before everything went down. Like, we know at this point to not do that. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. We know not to do that. I just do love something about her writing. It reminds me of when I used to read a lot of fanfic. When I was like 14, I read a lot of One Direction fan fiction. I'm not gonna lie to you on Tumblr. I was a bit addicted. Like, one shots, woo. <laughs> And so I think it just reminds me of those days. It has this fun joyfulness to it that I, I do just, I, I enjoy it. What can I say? <laughs> do I love it quite as much as other people? It is, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> I just can't help it. This is obviously the kind of romance I enjoy. And you know what? Good for me. Good for me. <laughs> Good for her. Also, I do think this is a case of like, reading something at the perfect time because this is exactly what I needed after reading seven horror books in a row. Listen, I am in the mood for spooky shit. The rest of this video is probably gonna be like mysteries, thrillers, stuff like that. This is what I needed right now to like get me in the right headspace. So anyway, it is half six. Never likes to focus on the clock. I'm getting a new phone by the way. I've had this for seven years. <laughs> I've had my phone for I think about seven years and um, I'm gonna get a new one but I can't decide which one to get. Do I just get the 13? Is like the 14 not different enough to justify it? If anyone's a big iPhone um, knowledger <laughs> who knows a lot about iPhones let me know because I don't think I want to get the expensive 14s because I'm not that bougie. I'm gonna have dinner in a sec and then at eight o'clock we have got football. We've got Norwich City playing on Sky so we have to watch. We have to watch. Tom's actually like, I'm not bothered, but I'm like, watching. But I'm hoping I'm gonna finish this this evening. That is the goal, because I really need to get moving on my reading. We'll see how quickly I read the second half in comparison to two hours 50, because that's pretty slow, I would say, for me to read 170 pages. Yeah, I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. I'm really enjoying it. Could it be another five star? It generally could be, and there's nothing wrong with that. in California The sun is always shining bright People are smiling, making plans Hiding behind their shades And you're doing the same No rain, no flowers Nothing's growing where you're at Heart is fire, but baby I bet you're cold without me even when it's 90 degrees. Hello, good morning. <laughs> so we are up to, let me show you the timer. How much have we read? Five hours and 30 minutes, basically. And I have just finished Love on the Brain. But I would say I did prefer the first half to the second half. I didn't dislike it. I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. So I really, <laughs> like I really still enjoyed it. I know not everyone has been loving this and I can just accept that like, it's something I enjoy and not everyone else has to enjoy. <laughs> but I'd say the first half was a five and the second half was a four. So 
4.5 stars. But I think I gave it a 4 on Goodreads because it does feel a little bit closer to a 4. Usually with 4.5s lately I've been rounding up on Goodreads because I feel kind, you know? Like I'm giving, I'm a giving person. But <laughs> it felt... It felt close to the fall for me. I think I loved the first half so much because I loved like the pining and like knowing, knowing how much he loved it. I was loving it. He wants to marry me. <laughs> That got me. Once like the actual romance side happened, like I wasn't as interested. I was into the pining and like just the like, ah. This is basically the Love Hypothesis 2.0, right? It is basically, I just really like her writing. What can I say? Ali Hazelwood, I just, I do enjoy her writing. She does seem to be the romance author for me. Towards the end, it almost made me cry twice. I really just enjoyed it. It was fun. It was exactly what I needed right now. Didn't love it quite as much as the Love Hypothesis, but I did still really enjoy it. It was a 4.5. I think Ali Hazelwood can just write. I will just say, Miss Ali, I'm paying a request in. Please, can the next book not be He's So Big, I'm So Small? Like, I've had enough of it. You've done five books. If we're including the novellas at this point, all five. All five have the trope. You can, you can live without it for one book. One book. Just give me one book without it. That's all I ask. It doesn't need it. <laughs> 4.5 for our first one. I've been thinking actually about this whole reading for 24 hours thing. I probably don't typically read for 24 hours in an average week. So I'm like, shit, I actually have to read a lot. This is a lot of reading. <laughs> and it's making me think diff differently about what I'm reading. Cause usually I have three books I have to read in a week for a video. And it's about reading those books as quickly as I can to do the video. But it's like, no matter how quickly I read, <laughs> got the set amount of hours I have to read. So I don't know, it's just interesting. It's making me think differently about my reading. And I think I'm gonna end up reading a lot more this week because I'm doing this. So next we are gonna start True Crime Story, which I'm so excited for. But actually this isn't what we're starting next. But, but I did tell a bit of a lie there because today I'm doing lots of stuff where I can listen to an audiobook whilst I work, which I don't usually do. Um, I have to paint a lot of TBR books today. So if you don't know, if you join my Patreon, if you join the top tier, you get sent two of the TBR Cluedo books and I paint them. I have to paint a black layer and then a gold layer on like the numbers and the, the paw prints that are on them. And I have got low, I need to like do a whole new batch of painting. I've got them made, but I need to do a whole new batch of painting. So that will take me a while. <laughs> And I can listen to an audiobook while I do that. I've got a cook. So I do have the audiobook for this, but because this is so visual, like there's so many different visual elements to this, I, I absolutely do not want to like just listen to this. I'm going to read this physically with the audiobook the whole time. So what I think I'm actually going to read, I was having a look through all my audiobooks on Scribble and Audible. I think I'm going to read Wildflower by Drew Barrymore. <laughs> I wanted to read this in uh, in September, I didn't get around to it, but after reading Jeanette McCurdy's audiobook, I realised I do enjoy audiobooks from like female celebrities who have been through a lot, and I've loved Drew Barrymore since I was very young, so it looks like we're going to read a lot of I don't know how excited you guys are going to be for this, but I should like probably finish it today. So I'll probably just read the whole thing and then give you my thoughts. It's seven hours long, so it will probably take me only like three and a half to four hours of reading. So my reading is going to probably slow down. Like if I read Wildflower physically, it'd probably take like two hours to read in terms of our 24 hour timer. But I'm listening to it audibly. So like my book to time ratio is going to be lower than it would have been if I just read stuff physically but listen to audiobooks is still reading and just because it's a slower form of reading doesn't devalue it so I think I'm gonna listen to Wild <laughs> while I do work today because I've got a lot of stuff to do that I can listen to the audiobook and I think sometimes I struggle even when I'm doing anything to listen to an audiobook but I think non-fiction is easier to follow because it's not like a story where you can like lose the point in the story it's like listening to podcasts I find always easy to listen to no matter what I'm doing so I think this will probably be on a similar wavelength so yeah go listen to Wildflower whilst I do work and then probably this evening we will start True Crime Story and I'm just like I'm I think I might just like read the whole thing today. <laughs> Depends how much time I have later, but I'm very excited.
Okay, evening. I feel like I was wearing this hoodie last night. <sighs> when I spoke to you. <laughs> Let it be known, right? I changed like 20 times a day. I wore this for maybe two hours last night and I've literally just got changed into it after cooking. Feel the need to defend myself. I feel like I just sounded like Victoria Beckham in that clip where she's like, they're playing this song just to annoy me. <laughs> I hate this song, that's how they put it on. They've done it to be annoying. Done it just to annoy me. So it is the end of the evening. It's quarter to eight, wasn't well, the end of the evening. I'm gonna read more tonight, but it's quarter to eight. I have read for 10 hours, 46 minutes. Um, it took me a little bit longer than expected to read Drew Barrymore's book, Wildflower. Um, partly because I think I had to read on a bit of a slower speed because because she's a celebrity, they speak a bit quicker and less clear than like professional audiobook narrators. So I couldn't listen as fast, but I finished it whilst I was doing work today. Well, I just finished it now actually after I cooked dinner, but um, I listened to the majority of it whilst I was working and I don't have much to say about it. <laughs> I'm giving it three stars, not because it was bad. I wasn't really expecting a ton from it, but I just, uh, I'm not sure if it was like entirely great. The writing wasn't amazing, but like I still love Drew Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> it well, didn't really talk about what she went through as a child. It didn't really want to touch on that. It didn't want to bring it up because I know she wrote an autobiography as a child about that experience, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think she really wrote that, but she probably didn't want to go into it again. I also felt like the book didn't necessarily translate. It almost did, but it didn't necessarily translate that kind of joy-filled, carefree energy that I feel like she emanates in a lot of stuff. I really liked the audiobook. If you're gonna read it, get the audiobook if you love Drew Barrymore. <laughs> I feel like if you love Drew Barrymore, you've probably read it already because it is like seven years old. Get the audiobook because she just starts like screaming a lot. If she's ever like angry in the book, she just starts like yelling, like screeching. <laughs> It was quite fun. Parts of it just made me sad though as well because there was a lot about her young children and her husband and then building this stable family that was gonna last forever because she didn't have that growing up and like her and her husband divorced like a year after the book was written. And so there was a lot about him and their children and you know, the family that they were building for them. And I, it just made me kind of sad like reading those parts. I don't know, it's just sad listening to someone hope for that feature and not getting it so but I don't know I don't really have any thoughts about it I just feel like it didn't lean either way it didn't lean into the difficult stuff that she's gone through which like she doesn't have to do it wasn't necessarily what I wanted in fact I wanted the opposite but like it, that still would have been you know, interesting to hear her reflections on that. She talked about it sometimes but not a lot and she didn't lean into fully like the hippie like connected to the universe stuff that she's touched on sometimes um, but didn't get fully into. I feel like the book should have gone in either of those two directions, essentially. I think I would rank it bottom out of all the kind of like strong women memoirs that I've read. Because all the other ones I've given I've given five stars, like Michelle Obama, Mariah Carey I love, Jeanette McCurdy. Um, and yeah, it didn't touch a lot on what I found so interesting was uh, Jeanette McCurdy talking about being a child actor. And obviously Drew was from the age of like, I think like seven months or something, she was a child actor. And it like, it would touch on it, but always just like, I was a child actor and it was so tough. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't like get below the surface. So yeah, I enjoyed listening to it, but it wasn't amazing. So for the rest of the evening, I'm gonna read as much of True Crime Story as I can. I'm gonna start it. I gotta be honest, I haven't been in the best mood today, <laughs> especially this evening. And there's always that part of me is like, this book is so five stars slay, five stars prediction slay. Do I wanna read it right now? But also it could be the thing that helps me feel better. So this evening I wanna tidy my room up a bit. I mean, it's not messy, but I wanna have a great day tomorrow and just feel like, no weight on my shoulders, so I want to tidy the room up a bit. It's really just like somebody pressed a button on a cultural reset. And I'm gonna grab a bath, but other than that, I'm gonna read this. Maybe I hope to get like 50 pages into it tonight. Good morning. 12 hours and 22 minutes we have been reading for. And I have gotten 100 pages into True Crime Story, and I'm really enjoying it. So basically, this opens, it's really clever, it opens with a publisher's note, saying that this is the second edition of the book being published to clarify certain things. The author and Penguin Random House have agreed to not 
uh, work together anymore and the author's like, there's been libelous accusations, gross misrepresentations of my character. We haven't got to what would cause that yet, but I'm intrigued because it's like him. It's Joseph Knox writing that. So he's like a character in the story himself and it does start to make you think like, oh my God, did this actually happen? Like, was there a first edition of this that has caused so much drama? There's not, it's all part of the like theatrics, but I love them giving me a moment, like setting the scene. Mm, I love it. It's all the drama, Mick, I just love it. I love books that do something a bit different. So we're following the disappearance of Zoe Nolan. Joseph Knox's friend, Evelyn, investigated this disappearance, interviewed all of her friends and family, and then was killed, was murdered. And so he is putting together the book that Evelyn was writing. And it's, um, I'm listening to the audiobook. It's a full cast, it's all interviews. These are all different interviews with people in Zoe's life. And we have emails between Evelyn and Joseph. I just love the drama. <laughs> I really do. I'm like, oh, I love it. Something that's so well done already. I mean, we've barely gone into it. We've kind of just set the scene, but the different characters will like say, oh, I bet this person is gonna say this and they're lying because of X, Y, Z. And then the other person will say, what was predicted for them to say. And so it's making you think, who can we trust? Who's telling the truth? Who's deceiving? Like, what is going on? Like, I need to know. <laughs> I just I'm feel so, so sorry. deceived. I know, but like, like honestly, we're I just in feel this. So we're all deceived. deceived. I will say, I was supposed to post this video this weekend, but I pushed it back to next weekend. And I was gonna read for twenty, like, do like a whole day of reading today to try and finish this video because I'm not enjoying this experiment. I'm really, I'm just not enjoying it. I'm really not enjoying it. <laughs> it's like stressing me out. I don't because, like, here's the thing: when you're trying to read. A certain amount of books like you can read quicker and it's like a sense of validation like if you get through a book quicker you're loving it you're reading it fast like you can't make time move faster and I just feel like it's stopping me doing other stuff I want to enjoy I don't think I read for 24 hours in a week I probably read for more like 18 if I had to guess do you feel I am trying to film this video in five days though I was trying to film it from Monday to Friday. So maybe I would read 24 hours if I included the weekend, but I wanted to start filming a different video this weekend. But I've pushed this video back a week. I'm not gonna read as much of this as I was going to today probably because I could just sense it was stressing me out. <laughs> this video, part of me was like, I just wanna scrap the video, but obviously I don't wanna do that because of the books that I've read already and started reading. But I just feel like it was really negatively impacting how I felt about the books and this one in particular. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go outside and do some yoga in my garden now and then do some patron stuff today. But I have got reading sprints tonight with my patrons and Riley, Marie's patrons, we're doing it together. Um, so I will get some good reading done by then. Hopefully by then I won't be feeling as much pressure. On page 245 so I'm nearing the end of true crime story oh how many what's my time where's my phone 14 hours and 30 30 something minutes 31 minutes is how much I have read so far I am so so glad I made a decision yesterday to push this video back a week because it means I'm not rushing and I'm not anxious about how much I have to read. Like I'm just gonna read for 24 hours no matter how long that takes me. So it's made me enjoy this book a lot more. Now I will say, I initially was just, when I think I first checked in with you, I'd been listening and reading along. And then I did do a bit where I listened only, I wasn't reading physically. They don't say the name of who is speaking before it switches every time. You know, every time it switches who is speaking, it doesn't say who it is. So you just have to remember the voices. Unless it's like a new character, then it will introduce them. But you just have to remember who everyone is. Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? And I think it's not that hard. Like you do, you do get to kind of learn who everyone is. But if that's tricky for you, maybe you've like experienced that. I think Daisy Jones on the Six does that. At the moment, it's probably like a four star. It's not quite giving me that five star slay. Gonna be honest. <laughs> Maybe because it's one of those books that I attach too much pressure to that I think I'm gonna love so much that it's then hard to adjust my opinions. But however, if this last 
last third absolutely amazes me. It absolutely can be a five star. It's probably more like a 4.35. 4.35 right now. <laughs> I think the only thing that I'm not, like I don't love that's holding me back a bit is I wish it was a bit more different mixed media. It literally is just all these interviews with these people that has been collated into a book. I would like, I mean, I don't know what it would be. That's not my job. We have occasional emails between chapters, but that's basically it. And I would like other forms of mixed media other than just the interviews would probably be my only complaint. But the audiobook is really good. It's really cool. It's got sound effects, like typing sound effects. All the people sound like they're being recorded by like a phone, not like a you know, audiobook recorder. So it adds the sense of atmosphere. And last night I was on sprints with my with my patrons and with Riley Marie and her patrons. And Jenny was reading this. And I I think I picked it for her to read in my last sprints because I knew I was gonna be reading it. And she was like always like 50 pages ahead of me. And she got to a certain point and she was like from page 275. <laughs> it goes crazy. She was like it's just been twist after twist after twist from page 275. So I'm nervous <laughs> for what's about to happen, but I'm really excited to read the end part of this. And I feel like if it really, like, the twists get going, it could either be a five star. So I'm hoping to finish this today. So let's go see how I find it. <laughs> I've literally only read, like, 30 more pages, but I got to the the first twist at 275. Two, um... <laughs> love a bit of drama i am so guys whoa the tw you wanted a twist day eh? oh my god i'm so excited to read on i need to like edit a video today and i'm like yeah i don't really want to do that <laughs> well we will continue with that in a sec but i just realized i have some stuff that i can unbox with you i have an amazon parcel and a fairy loot box so i thought let's do that but like i'm gagged <laughs> So I don't know what this Amazon parcel is, which is why I decided to save it. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So this is an elderly lady is up to no good. This is, I did not realize it was so tiny. Um, this has been sent to me by Jenny who recommended this to me in one of my reading sprints of my patrons and she's got it for me. Oh my God, that's so kind. I had no idea this was so small. Jenny says this is perfect for a readathon and I completely agree. Oh my God, that's so cute. Like, let me find a paperback, like a normal size paperback. Look how much smaller it is than a normal size paperback in terms of like size. Oh my God, I'm gonna be like, <laughs> how cute. Thank you, Jenny. And then this is September's fairy loot, I believe. Oh my God, a six Crimson Cranes blanket. I don't wanna get it all out now because then it will just be a nightmare for me <laughs> until I figure out when I was where I want to stall it. But wow, that's really soft. How cute. A tea tin inspired by the book of the month. Okay, cute. Oh my God, some botanical coasters. Wow, these are cute. I'm gonna use these when I eventually have my own place. That's like a really nice usable thing that like it doesn't look overly like book merchy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> When there's stuff for the home, I'm not the kind of person to have a lot of like book merchy stuff, but that just looks cute. Oh my God, I love that. Wow, that's like one of my favorite items I've had in a while. A trinket dish inspired by uh, Carden from the Folk of the Air series, which I have not read. But I do love a good trinket dish and there's Carden. Okay, cute. I'm still like in my head like shook about that twist I just read. I just, I, just, I have to do work and I don't want to. So let's see what the book is. Oh my God, we're purple. <gasps> it's Belladonna by, <coughs> joking. <coughs> I'm like too overwhelmed. It's Belladonna by um, Adeline Grace. I have wanted to read this so bad. I'm like, do I just read this in this vlog? No, I don't think so. That's like a bit quick, but oh my God. <gasps> <gasps> oh my god look at her i'm obsessed wow oh my god the vibes the vibes i'm so excited i might have to read this this month i feel like i'm gonna have to read this i've never read anything by adeline grace but i've always been intrigued but this one is definitely like the best synopsis i've ever heard from her the thing says it's a romantic fantasy set in a gothic infused world of wealth desire and betrayal to uncover a murderer the main character forms an un oh my god an <laughs> can't even speak an unlikely alliance with death himself wow 
I might, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna read this in this video, but I might read this in a vlog later in October, perhaps. I've got a few videos where I don't know what I'm reading for them yet. And this, this could slot in there quite nicely. Oh my God, look at just the vibes of that. My God. Okay, thank you, Fairy League. I will leave them linked down below. Now I am gonna go ahead and finish True Crime Story and I am not ready. When lights go out My camera's got like 4% battery, so let's be quick. But I'm giving it five stars. I loved the ending of this. It was so good. From that last point when I checked in with you, it was just twist after twist after twist after twist after twist. I'm shaking. I'm physically shaking. It was done so well, like right up to the end when I was just filming myself, you were constantly like, it's that person. No, it's that person. No, it's that person. Like you, I had, no idea and like i thought a couple times oh it's it's the person who it ended up being like the person who was behind uh zoe's disappearance and everything else that happens throughout the book but then i would like doubt myself because it would kind of be like explained away like no 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 it's not them it's someone else it's that person i was like ah like pointing the fingers at everyone it was just so good it was such an imaginative way of telling a story i just absolutely loved it i got really into the kind of interview format by the end of it and i think i'd felt a bit disconnected from some of the characters at the beginning because you know you're only getting like you're not getting descriptions of them you're just getting to hear them as characters but I got really into it I got really into it <laughs> I would 100% listening to the audiobook and reading it physically if you can if that's within your your means because it is a great experience reading the two together I think that is the best way to experience this I loved the emails I loved this we've got also a mystery of what happened to Evelyn whose book this originally is I thought that Joseph Knox the author is such an interestingly flawed character there was like two mysteries in this in a way and I just loved it it was just Again. It gave me drama, it gave me suspense, it gave me everything. I loved it. I would love to read more stuff like this from Joseph Knox in the future because he has a trilogy here, but I think it's not similar to this really. So I think I'm at about almost 17 hours now in terms of how much I've read. I'm now gonna take a break from this vlog to go ahead and read Circe by Madeline Miller. This is my book club pick for last month, but I always read it the next month because that's when our live show is. And I thought about including this in the times of um, you know, the timings that we have, but it didn't feel right because I do a separate vlog for it there and I wouldn't vlog it in this video. So it didn't really feel fair to you or them. So I'm gonna step away from this vlog for the weekend, read this, and I'll be back with you probably early next week. Depends how quickly I get through Cersei deciding what to read next. Okay, it's been a couple days, more days than I wanted. I think I last spoke to you last Friday and it's Thursday. In that time, I got quite 
sick with a it's just a cold but like i i still don't feel good <laughs> gonna be honest um so i read cersei it took me quite a while to read cersei but we're gonna get back into this vlog today and i'm gonna read sleep by cl taylor because um this is in my tbr cluedo for this month so i have to read it this month and when i was reading cersei for my patron book club it was not what i needed to read while i was ill when you're feeling ill and like your brain is a bit foggy like i don't think cersei is really the vibe <laughs> it's not the vibe stop so I've been craving like a fast paced murder mystery thriller and that's what this is. So I'm gonna try and read this pretty much all of today. Just for recap, we are at 16 hours, 44 minutes. So I reckon that this will keep us under the 20 hour mark. I don't think this will take that long to read. It's only about 340 pages and I think it will be just like a super fast read and I'm gonna focus on getting this read today. So that's the plan. Basically, I'm just gonna do a lot of reading. been sitting here on the sofa under my new heated blanket <laughs> we bought heated blankets because electricity and heating <laughs> is gonna get very expensive in the uk so we've got these to try and you know offset the cost of heating and not have to put heating on and i'm already halfway through sleep and uh, listen it's almost like I know myself because this is exactly what I needed. In this, oh, I just realized I've got to pause the, I've got like a library ASMR on. Can you stop? Okay. Basically our main character, Anna, she is in a car accident that kills two of her co-workers and she was at the wheel. It's not her fault, but there's like, so a, a truck, a truck driver fell asleep at the wheel and like drifted over into her lane. But she was distracted when that happened. And so she blames herself. And so she's like, I need to get away. I'm going to go work at this like remote hotel in Scotland. So she's working there and she's having trouble sleeping as well. And they keep seeing messages about sleep that come up. Like you will sleep put on her car and stuff, which is very suspicious. And she's working at the hotel and it becomes clear that because of her being the, the car driver in the accident, someone might want her dead. And one of the guests who have arrived at the hotel may be there to kill her, essentially. I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. And it has gotten off to like, it's been a slow, I don't want to slow start because I've read it super quick. How, I think we're at like 18 hours. So it's taken me about two hours, I think to read what I've read so far. But we had a slow start where it was her dealing with the aftermath of the accident and feeling so much guilt and paranoia and feeling like people were out to get her and her separating from her boyfriend as well, who like their relationship was already over before the accident. But like, he's up to something. There's like other storylines going on at the same time as being at the inn. We're mostly at the hotel, but um, yeah, he's got a storyline and I'm like, girl, Men, I just don't like men. So yeah, no, it's like exactly what I needed right now. Cersei was just wrong place, wrong time. Whereas this, it's just like, my brain can just relax. It's just like a fun, it's gonna be murder mystery, thrillery, like isolated. They're stuck in this hotel together. There's a storm going on. There's like, they're on like a Scottish island. There's no uh, contact. Like the Wi-Fi's down, phone signal's down. Everything's down. Girl, there's been a death already. I love it. I... Whew, I love it so much. I still don't feel great in myself. I've been feeling a bit like brain foggy and like I've been getting very anxious about finishing this vlog for you guys, full disclosure, <laughs> and filming because I want to read but I worry that I'm not saying as insightful or interesting stuff as I usually do. I mean, I don't know if I... <laughs> It's already already scraping the barrel. You know, I when I'm ill, I feel like I'm not I don't do as good a job at communicating my thoughts and that's something I always really want to do. I want to say stuff that's like interesting and worth your time and then when I get really anxious, and because I'm anxious, I'm overthinking stuff. And it's just like not a vibe. But I am really enjoying this. I feel like 
it's almost it's very interesting. I feel like Cersei, oh for context, I gave Cersei a four star, maybe more than a three point five, but I recognise that is entirely due to the fact that I read it when I shouldn't have. I read it when I wasn't feeling well, when I was very tired, when I've been like struggling to focus. So the Cersei got a lower rating than it would have had I read it in another situation. Whereas this could get a higher rating than it would have usually because it's exactly what I want to read right now. So isn't that interesting? We learn something new every day. Anyways, I'm going to go finish this. And once we finish this, we'll probably only have one book left of the vlog. And I don't know what it's going to be. It depends how much time we have left. I'll have to figure it out. But um, yeah, I'm super excited to see where this goes. I feel like the tension is just going to build and build and build. So let's just go finish it. I'm literally just going to stay sitting here and finish it. <laughs> okay, good morning. So I just finished off sleep this morning. And I was actually a bit disappointed by it. I still enjoyed it. Like I had a good reading experience. It was a fun quick fast-paced thriller but it just wasn't everything that I wanted so I feel like we had a lot of characters we had probably I think about eight main characters and I forgot who some people were some of the characterizations bled into one another and weren't distinguishable enough that's problem numero uno problem two is that the reason that they are stuck here is because of this storm right and I just didn't feel like the atmosphere was built up enough. I kept thinking back to An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina. Can we just talk about how literally all UK thrillers are like blue, yellow, and white? Like, what the hell? You're what? I'm you. And I loved this. This one, they're, they're like stuck in a remote inn again in a snowstorm, I think. And this one, the storm was like almost a character in itself. It was so atmospheric, so like overwhelming to the story. And this one, I actually didn't feel, I didn't feel like I was actually there. I didn't feel like the storm was happening. <laughs> They'd be like, every time I went out, they'd be like, we were buffeted by the storm. We could barely walk. But I don't know. I, it just didn't evoke, for whatever reason, it didn't evoke that feeling and that imagery to me very strongly. There wasn't a lot of twists. And if you don't give me a lot of twists, I want there to be like high, high, high stakes. And it didn't feel like until the last 40 pages there were high stakes. I didn't feel like enough stuff happened. So yeah, I was just a bit disappointed by this. But I still enjoyed a lot of it. Like I had a lot of fun reading it. Um, Am I going to give it a three? I think I'm just going to give it a three. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Kelly Arsh. I was going to give it a 3.5, but I feel like it's more of a three. It was fine. It was a fun read. I feel like this is a perfect book to read in one sitting, but it just wasn't amazing. But like when the reveal happened, I wasn't like, oh, I got that. And I wasn't shocked. I was just like, okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? So now we are up to 21 hours. So... I was thinking about this. We need a book that's going to take me three hours to read. That's hard. <laughs> I feel like books are often like short, like two hours or four hours. I think this took me about four hours to read. And it's hard because you don't know whether a book is going to be like fast paced or not. I think we're probably going to want a book that's like 250 pages, 200 to 250 pages. So I thought, let's go on my own. I can actually record my screen. So let's go on my own shelf and let's do number of pages okay and we'll, we'll sort by that so we want something that's around 200 to 250 pages i think um so all these are unknown these are all too short okay oh i could read an agatha christie or i could read a forgotten women that i think they're good options okay yeah do i read what's my next agatha is it lord edgeware dies Am I in the mood for an Agatha? I feel like that will be quicker than three hours. Oh, I don't know. Perilla End House. How many pages is that? 287. Yeah, let's, should we read that? <laughs> or do I read a Forgotten Women? My initial assumption that I was going to do was Forgotten Women. But this might take me less than three hours because um, it has pictures as well. How long? Let me go on script and see how long the audiobook is for Perilla End House because that will give me a better judge of how long it's going to take me. Perilla End House. Where are you? Three out of five. Oh, the audiobook is only five hours. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think that will take me that long. Let's go with Forgotten Women, the writers. 
Should I do the writers? Yeah, let's do the writers. Yeah, I feel like because it's non-fiction, it might take me a little bit longer to read this. And I've been wanting to make progress in this series for so long. If you don't know, this is a non-fiction series. We have Forgotten Women. I've read the leaders and then this is the writers and I have the artists and the scientists as well. But let's read the writers today. And it's just about forgotten women throughout history and it has illustrations about them and a couple pages about them. So yeah, no, I'm super excited. Let's go read this. the writers and I do have to say I didn't enjoy this as much as the leaders. I'm gonna give it a 3.5. This is difficult to talk about right because it's like non-fiction and it's just like you know three pages on each woman. Because the other book was the leaders I found there was a lot of variation as to what the woman did in their life <laughs> but this is the writers and so you know it was all kind of along the same wavelength essentially. I don't know I think just the whole book being about writers actually didn't work for me when it when it should because I love books I love writers like it should work for me but I think it was just too much of a good thing do you know what I mean whereas in the leaders there's a lot of variation as to what the person led in you know that's a fairly broad term it does make me a bit worried for the artists and the scientists because again it could be fairly narrow it is what it is it is what it is I still enjoyed it though I still loved learning about about forgotten women throughout history. I think it's so important that we do this because, you know, it's always frustrated me how male <laughs> history is. I remember I was thinking about studying history at A-level and uh, me and my mum said to the teacher, the curriculum that I would study, it's very male. It's all about men. And he went, yes, yes it is. <laughs> As if like, he wasn't saying it was a bad thing. He was like, what do you expect? To be fair, it was an all boys school for most of the school. Sixth form girls could join, which is when I was joining. So it was majority boys in the class, but that doesn't mean they should just learn about men. Like, <laughs> excuse me? I was angry. I was angry. So yeah, you know, I still think reading stuff like this and learning this is important. I'm still gonna read the other books in the series. I don't know. They all just kind of bled into one for me. I don't know. So let's get the books together that I read in this vlog. So I read five books in this vlog and I would say this is my ranking. Obviously Wildflower isn't here. I would say that is at the bottom probably in terms of enjoyment. These two are probably, the more I think about it, they are interchangeable between 4.5 and 5, both of them. I would say like I enjoyed the start of this more and enjoyed the end of this more. So I mean like, whoa. <laughs> Books always are more likely to be rated higher when the ending is better because you end on the high, right? You end on like, oh my god, that was amazing. But they're pretty similar, those two. But um, yeah, let's see how much I read. So I read for a total of 24 hours and 26 minutes, which it did take me a little bit longer to read Forgotten Women, the writers, because it's nonfiction. It is a little bit more dense, I guess, than I anticipated. But also at least 26 minutes of those 24 hours, I probably wasn't reading and I was on my phone, but the time I was still running. So I've read for about 24 hours give or take I didn't like this experiment <laughs> I found it stressful I don't think I want to time my reading I think I find much more gratification from finishing books than I do reading for a certain amount of time so I won't be doing this again <laughs> But it was an interesting experiment. You know, I read five books. You know, some of them were a bit shorter, but I still read five books. So it's interesting to see how long it takes me to read that amount of pages and books. But yeah, let me know what you thought of any of the books in this vlog. I would love to know if you've read any of them. But if you've gotten to the end of the video, comment the like pen emoji for Forgotten Women the Writers, like the, you know, there's like a pen emoji <laughs> or the notepad or anything to do with writing. Comment emoji down below if you've gotten to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.